Let's begin our conversation about human anatomy and physiology by taking a look at what life is. This is not going to be an esoteric conversation of when life begins or when life ends. This is a conversation about the characteristics of life. If we take a look at a human being, a tree, or a bacteria, as different as they look, they have some similar, they have some common characteristics. Let's take a look at what all life has in common. All life is irritable. They all have growth and development. They all reproduce. They all have movement. They all have a self-regulating metabolism and they all have the ability to adapt to the environment. Let's take a look at the first one, irritability. Irritability is not me in the morning without my first cup of coffee or my second or my third, or moving on from there. Uh, but irritability is simply the ability to react to a stimuli. A stimuli is defined as any change in the environment. This environment can be either internal or it can be external. For example, an external change in the environment. Say a temperature change. Let's say that winter's coming and it's getting colder. You react to that stimuli. If it is a hot day, you react to that stimuli. Uh, if a bug lands on your arm, you react to that stimuli. This is a change in your external environment. An internal environment is internal. So for example, you might get hungry. You might get tired. These are things that you as a living thing or any living thing has to be able to recognize and respond to. We have to react to or at least know that there's a change in our environment. So irritability is defined as being able to recognize that there's a stimulus, there's a change in our environment and be able to react to it. The next one is growth and development. Growth and development is a little tricky because people kind of equate the two being the same thing and they're, they're really not. Growth is a growth process. Something is getting bigger, okay? Simply a size increase. Development is more of a maturation process. Maturation is a $10 word for uh, getting older, all right? So for example, as a baby is born, it goes through several development processes. It will learn to pick its head up, it'll learn to sit up, it'll get its first tooth, it'll learn to walk. Um, as the child gets older, it will go through puberty, moving on forward and forward. These are examples of development. And as humans, we have development stages throughout our life. If you take a psychology course, you actually learn about people who made entire careers out of basing uh, challenges and psychological changes out of different developmental parts of people's lives. And depending on their school, they might have called it different things, et cetera, et cetera. So moving on, this is not a psychology course. So we have, so far we have irritability, we have growth and development. Next we have reproduction. Reproduction can either be asexual or sexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction is happening right now out there. What I mean by that is you are experiencing mitosis. Skin cells are being sloughed off. Uh, maybe you have pizza, you're studying for an anatomy test and you're eating some pizza and you burn the top of your mouth. These are examples of cells being replaced. It is a common occurrence. Asexual reproduction occurs, it replaces uh, cells that are damaged or are going to be dead or you need to grow, et cetera, et cetera. The other type of reproduction, and I won't judge you if that's what you're doing right now, is sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction is when you combine half a genetic code from one host and half of a genetic code from another host. So you have two parents, they come together and they create a brand new critter. Something that has been unseen on this planet is now created. Half and half come together and you make a new something. So we have irritability, growth and development, and reproduction. We now talk about movement. Movement can be obvious, okay? Movement can be obvious. You're walking to class, you're walking back from class. I have two children. Trust me, you'll hear me talk about them plenty of times throughout these videos. They have obvious movement after Halloween. Oh, wow, yeah, everywhere, okay? That's obvious movement. We also have movement that's not so obvious. Let me hold still. 
Now, don't think that the video is frozen. I'm still here. But even though I'm not really moving, don't pay attention to the mouth. Even though I'm not really moving, that's obvious, I'm still experiencing movement. There is still movement occurring. My heart is still beating. It's still pumping blood. There is still gas exchange. There is still digestion. These are examples of internal movement. So movement has to occur in any living thing. A self-regulating metabolism. There are certain keywords that you're going to hear throughout your studies of human anatomy and physiology that should go ding, followed by a definition. Metabolism is one of them. Metabolism is defined as the sum of all chemical reactions in the body. So metabolism is the sum of all chemical reactions that are happening in the body. What we mean by this is that, and we'll trust me go into more detail when we get to the cellular respiration chapter, in your body right now, there are tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of chemical processes occurring, chemical reactions. So even if you stink at chemistry, your body doesn't, okay? Your body understands chemistry even if it doesn't show on an exam. You are metabolizing food. You are creating hormones. All these things are happening. These are all reactions that are happening in the body and they have to be regulated. The body has to control these processes which introduces an additional term called homeostasis. Homeostasis, which we'll look at later in the lesson one videos, is the body's ability to stay neutral. The body doesn't really like change, and the body has to be able to come back from a change. It likes to stay kind of in the middle of the road, doesn't want to go that way, doesn't want to go that way, and homeostasis is the body's desire to kind of bring everything back to normal. The last characteristic that life has in common is the ability to adapt to the environment. Now these are all kind of tied in here. We have the self-regulating metabolism and irritability. Well this ties in with that and that is we have to be able to adapt to our environment. If you are in a cold place, you will act differently in a cold place as opposed to being in a hot place. These adaptations can be physiological, they can be uh, environmental changes that you do, we have a different kind of housing, they can be psychological. These are things that we do to adapt to our environment. Now, saying that, there is still a limit in how much things can adapt to. It's called the tolerance limit. So for example, if we took a freshwater fish and dropped it into a saltwater pond, or pond, I don't think it a saltwater aquarium, then the fish would have some difficulties adapting and it would most likely die. If you took a saltwater fish and dropped it into a freshwater aquarium, same, same. So there's a limit on how much something can adapt to. In our next video, we're going to continue our trek through human anatomy.